Welcome back to Sky News tonight, live from St. Anne's Square in Manchester. And here in the city centre, Muslim leaders from around the country have joined with those from other faiths in a vigil for the victims of the terror attack. Some of it's still going on. With me is Mohammed Shafiq, who organised the vigil, which finished uh, a short time ago. Well, I say finished, Mohammed. Behind you are still some of your, your friends and colleagues. We've got uh, MuslimsForPeace.com there with love for all, hatred for none. Why did you think it was important to make sure that there was a, another rally tonight? Well, the terrorists set out to divide communities and we thought it was very important for all of us, Muslim, Jewish, Christian, uh, come together, hold hands together in unity and purpose and show the world that whatever the terrorists try to do, we won't be cowarded by that. Um, and you saw that on Monday night with the taxi drivers and the yeah. takeaway workers who were taking people. I know a taxi driver who drove somebody 45 miles to Stoke-on-Trent, all for free. Um, you know, that's the great thing about my city. You know, I know you, people who live in London will say your city is great, <laughs> but, you know, we're the greatest city on earth. Why? Because the compassion that we saw, um, despite the anguish and the turmoil of having to come to terms with the fact that these were children, uh, you know, we carried that, but put it to a side and just rolled our sleeves up and got on with it. And you saw it today. Mm. Muslims, Christians, Jews, gay, straight, everybody united saying, you know, we're not going to let the terrorists uh, succeed and we're not going to let the far right also come to our city and divide us. Well, you know what has been said in some places online and they single out a perversion of Islam, of your faith. Do you feel, though, that in part of this is that you have to say once again, it's not in our name. This is a tiny proportion of the Muslim community, if we can even call it that, not part of the community, and they, and they pervert my religion. No faith in this world encourages the brutal massacre of children as we saw on Monday night. No faith. And if, if that was what my faith was teaching, I wouldn't want to be in it either. My faith teaches compassion. Um, they've distorted our faith. We've got to take them on. But more importantly, as a community, we're still not done enough. When we've got young people who are so disconnected from our society that the moment we talk about what's happening in Libya, in Syria, in regards to our foreign policy, we get accused of being apologists for terrorism. Let's have an honest and open debate about these issues, and above all, let's not let people divide us. Well, let's have a bit of that yeah, open sure. and, and honest debate. And um, are you saying then that some people, particularly young Muslims, feel that Muslims are being oppressed there and they have to fight back in some way, even in the most extreme form? Yeah, so you look at what happened in Libya. We went in, we bombed Libya, and then we left and ISIS was on the rise in Libya. The same in Afghanistan, the same in Iraq. So I'm arguing that because of our military adventures in these countries, we've allowed the terrorist narrative to take hold, we've allowed people to be brainwashed, and then we have what we saw here on Monday. Mm. There's no justification. Are you, are, are you part, though, of correcting the narrative? Because also, you know, we've also got interventions by the UK and other forces, for instance, in the 90s in Bosnia, yeah. to save European Kosovo, Muslims, yeah. yeah, in Kosovo as mm. well. But there's a positive narrative. Yeah, absolutely. Then. And, and it's, it's really about, you know, the great thing that we've seen over the last 24 hours is a coming together of people um, in Manchester and in this country. And we've shown the world that whatever the terrorists do, whatever the far right do, we're not going to let you divide our community and we stand in unity. Mm. So, but tell me about you putting the, the message across about the grassroots mm. work you're doing, about the community work, about the, the turning away. When, we get, when you get reports, when you hear of particularly young people, impressionable people perhaps, saying, well, oh, I'd, I'd like to go to Syria or something like that. What do you say to them? How do you help? Well, first of all, I think we've got to take on the narrative. So they've got in their mindset this ideology which says you can use violence to make political points, and Islam sanctions that. And we've got to use the edicts that we've seen from scholars like Tahul Qadri or Sheikh Hamza Yusuf America. They've, you know, they've produced real strong evidence from the Quran and the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, why terrorism is wrong. And that's what we've got to promote. Do that and grassroots and actually give young people a voice and give them a platform. Because Dermot, no disrespect to you and Sky no, News, absolutely. On, on these channels, how often do we actually give young people a, a chance to speak up and talk about Well, I must issues? say on our channel, we give them as much okay. of an opportunity as we possibly can. I just want to take sure. whatever positive we can out of tonight. What you've been talking about in terms of the mm. vigil you organised. Where does Manchester go from here? How quickly does it pull back together? Um, you know, if you just go one block away from where we're standing, you see normal life's return. We'll have the Manchester Games here this weekend. Uh, actually, we'll be stronger. We won't let any terrorist dividers. We won't let any far-right uh, dividers either. Sound message, Mohamed Shafiq. Very good, good to see you. you. Thank you very Thank much you. indeed. And you're watching Sky News tonight. Coming